This is Luke Paulson, the Catholic Conservative, and welcome to the News of the Week for February 3rd, 2024. And if you enjoy these videos, do not forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more. Libertarian at Davos I mentioned last week that the head of J.P. Morgan while at Davos had to admit that President Trump was right. However, he was not the only one that started to make sense. Argentina's new Libertarian President Javier Malay also made sense. While addressing the globalists and communists who attended the meeting, he told them to embrace liberty. Millet pointed out that the evidence that the free market is a superior system is overwhelming. After all, it was the people on the communist side who fled to the side of freedom, not the other way around. No one is fleeing into China, Cuba, or North Korea. However, I doubt that any of these people will listen, as that would diminish the control that they have worked their lives to obtain. Debanking is a word. President Trump was mocked for using the term debanking with the fake news claiming that the term does not exist. This is despite the fact that it does and there is a whole Wikipedia page about it. According to the Wikipedia article that must not exist, debanking, also known within the banking industry as de-risking, is the closure of people's or organizations' bank accounts by banks who perceive the account holders to pose a financial, legal, regulatory, or reputational risk to the bank. Google programmed their search engine to bury the word as a potential misspelling. They did the same thing with the prompt to keep people from talking about the Clinton body count not too long ago. No. Why would President Trump mention this word? Could it be that we are dealing with lawfare and major banks are keeping people from donating? And heads of states are stopping funds from being donated? I think he also sees lawfare happening to himself. Speaking of which... Trump supporter sues him. If you are going to sue someone for defamation or whatever it is that Carol is suing over, it does not help if you say that you are a fan of said person's series. Carol is a journalist in a whack job that is part of the lawfare against President Trump. In this case, she won getting $83 million from her case. Not only does she want to campaign for Brandon with the winnings, she claimed that she will do a lot of good with the money. However, now she is floating the idea of going on a shopping spree for new outfits. She has just come that wanted a quick buck and wanted nothing to do with justice. In light of this, now more people are suing President Trump, this time over something that other people did. Sued for the actions of others. President Trump never told the people to go into the Capitol during the mostly peaceful protest of January 6th. President Trump told the people to go home during the mostly peaceful protest of January 6th. Yet, somehow, he is being held responsible for all of this. Again. Now several congressmen and law enforcement are suing him for endangering their lives despite having nothing to do with the mostly peaceful protest of January 6th. Despite FBI operatives like Ray Epps. In fact, tomorrow, I don't even like to say it because I'll be arrested. Well, let's not say it. We need, we let's need to say go, it. I'll say it. All right. We need to go in. Shut the fuck up, Boomer. To the Capitol. On the ground in Capitol Police letting the people in, somehow President Trump is being blamed and getting sued. It was not nearly enough to lock these people away for three years. This is something that you would expect in a third world country. But it is becoming increasingly obvious that we now live in a banana republic. Unscrupulous actions in the Capitol. OMG Media is on a roll and James O'Keefe personally went undercover and found something truly vile. You remember the unmentionable party that happened in the hearing room not too long ago? Of course you do, not just because it was all over the news, but because Representative Cawthorn refused to comment. Now OMG has revealed that these parties are so mainstream that it is an open secret at this point amongst those on Capitol Hill. Apparently this is used as blackmail. Someone takes part in one of these parties, and this is used to ensure that they vote the correct way on important legislation. In other words, if you do not sin, you cannot be blackmailed with sin. Why anyone would want to do something that was in such blatant disregard for God's divine orders is beyond me. Then again, this is the same culture that endorses sodomy and pedophilia. Tim Allen and Roseanne Barr. Tim Allen has been making liberals upset since his new show focused more on giving than receiving, even if it was for the abomination that was Disney. Roseanne Barr, despite being canceled, is far from done. She was killed off of her own show by her snowflake of a producer. Once sharing the same soundstage in Des Moines, the two have hit an alliance in recent days. 
Tim Allen has secured a spot in seven episodes of Raising the Bar. If we do not stand together, we will not be able to save our country. The fact that these voices are standing together and that the woke companies are falling by the wayside gives me hope. However, the battle is far from over and we cannot take it easy. Lack National Anthem. The Super Bowl is perhaps the biggest waste of time in the world of sports. Reportedly, the event will have the Black National Anthem. No word yet on the Latino National Anthem, or the Asian National Anthem, or the Arab National Anthem, or the European National Anthem, or any National Anthem for any other melanin concentration for that matter. If only there were a National Anthem that represented all persons and creeds within America. Perhaps some sort of National Anthem. Taking out statues. Remember the statues that the Black Crimes Matter terrorists tore down left and right without prosecution? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Now the Navy SEAL that tore down the Satan statue has a persecutor. Don't you mean prosecutor? No! Why did one group get called peaceful and get bailed out by the person running for vice president, and this one does not? These people are tearing down statues of anyone and everyone, even Lincoln. Yet, none of them tore down statues of Margaret Sanger, a prominent eugenicist who said that black people were weeds. Or Karl Marx, whose ideas killed more people than any other economic system in history. The reason why this man was targeted is because people do not want to live under God's rules and remain willingly ignorant to the judge of heaven and earth. We fight not just against the forces of this world, but the demonic forces behind them. Maybe I'm just blowing smoke. Maybe I'm completely off my rocker, but that is just my opinion. And do not forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more. But before you go, on the left I have last week's video, but you may also enjoy the video on the right.